Hey everyone, welcome to Whole Artist Mastery. I'm Marianne Mitchell, and I'm here today in my urban studio, and I'm telling you that because it's a really, really rainy, cold April day in Philadelphia, um, classic day for Philadelphia. And um, so you will be hearing splashing on the roads, some big trucks, which is what I hear on a regular basis in an urban studio. It's part of what I want to talk about today, which is how we as artists choose to show up as an artist based on who we are, what, what our inspiration is, why we're inspired by what we're inspired by, how we make that happen in our work, and how those two things come together to determine how we want to be an artist in the world. Again, in my previous videos, I've talked a little bit about how you find your voice, and then how that determines how you're going to make work that's compelling to, to you, and ultimately, how that work is compelling to those who see it. And so today, I'm going to talk about how that informs what you do as an artist and the choices that you make, whether you want to be professional, semi-professional, or I've worked with people who are really studying with me just for their own personal exploration. So I'm going to share with you a few stories about how people have figured out what is inspirational to them and how to make that happen and how that determines what they're doing with their art and showing up as an artist. And I'm gonna start with my story. I've been considering myself a professional artist for almost 40 years. And um, what does that mean? I guess, you know, I went to art school, have a BFA, um, started painting right out of school, traveled a bit, was very fortunate to have the wherewithal to do that. Um, did some postgraduate work in Japan and um, the Vermont Studio School and then China. And um, all the way along, I was searching for different medium to express the, the different things that I was compelled by in, in my travels and in my life. And interestingly enough, when people know they're do you're doing what you're doing, um, a friend of mine said, oh, she was working at a, a local theater and she said, you know, the Walnut Street Theater ha is setting up a little gallery space at the reception area. Would you like to show there? So I said, yes. So I had my work in this little reception area and it invited everybody I knew. And guess what? Everybody showed up. And to my great amazement, most of the work sold. So that began to point me in the direction, all right, I can really do this. And um, from there, had a couple of gallery shows. And then a, a few years later, I thought, all right, you know, this is not consistent enough. And I'd really like to show in New York and get, um, you know, I was living in Philadelphia show in Philadelphia. So I would go to galleries and sort of meekly show them my work um, to no avail. And so I ended up hiring a career consultant for artists who helped me apply for uh, a very prestigious grant, which I ended up winning, the Mid-Atlantic Arts Foundation Fellowship for Painting, and then connected me to a gallery in New York. So I started showing in New York, which then led me to show in the LA area and Washington DC. And in the midst of this, I had my daughter and my husband and I were living outside of Philadelphia. And um, this is all part of the story because I was finally doing the path that I really aspired to. And yet, I also had a young family. 
and a house to take care of and a husband who was working and traveling around the world. And it became a little too much for me. And so I had to, as a woman artist uh, and as a professional, make some choices. You know, where do I want to show? I was also had gotten into a, one of the best Philadelphia galleries, the Rosenfeld Gallery, which uh, closed. Richard Rosenfeld retired in 2015, but I was there from 1996 to 2015. And I decided that um, it was more important for me to stay at home. And um, I don't want to say it that way, but to, to really be there and present for my child and, and my family and my life there it, that revolves around um, your family. And so continue to show in Philadelphia and um, connect with art consultants and uh, who connected me to big corporate collectors. And so things were, were um, very active um, without having to travel around the country. And, um, but the price that I paid for that was to um, jump off, I guess you might say, the Star Trek. Um, and, and I'm okay with that uh, because what ended up happening is that I found that I truly love imparting knowledge to those who are interested in learning about themselves and making art in a way that connects to their deeper voice. And so started teaching in the year 2000 and it was like I'd always been teaching. And I was fortunate in that I had not been teaching at a, as you know at the earlier part of my career. So I had all of these years of experience to impart on people. So at this point what I find myself doing is running this business, Whole Artist Mastery, and helping as many people as I can learn on a much deeper level about who they are and then how that informs their vision as an artist and um, based on the many trials and challenges and great successes that I've had. So that's only part of my story, but I want to share a few other stories. And one of the first ones that came to mind is, is one of my earlier clients. This is a woman who had been a professional photographer for many years and came to me because she was feeling called to actually create with materials and connect to this part of her spirit, of her being, in a way that she was feeling photography was um, falling short of allowing her to really connect to her deeper voice. So we ended up working for two years, and before she uh, ended her, or took a hiatus from photography, she was doing portrait projects with people. And she came to me because she wanted to do abstract expression, but after the first year it became apparent that that capturing and um, and celebrating the soul of a human being through creating their face. And this is a person who had never taken formal art instruction and these faces were coming out as though she'd been drawing her entire life. They were phenomenal. And so together we realized, you know, maybe rather than doing abstract expression that she was really compelled to capture the essence of people's lives through these portraits and people's lives that have had many challenges um, because she herself is a person who has had many challenges in life and she feels an affinity with people who who also have had many challenges so what she's doing now is doing portraits and um, 
and working with various different organizations to celebrate the people who these organizations are helping through her artwork and um, giving anytime she sells a piece she gives the money to one of the nonprofits that she's supporting and it's it's really very cool so in her sense she realized that her what she was really drawn to express and how she was making that happen was less about selling art in in the commercial realm in the gallery realm in the traditional way that we sell art because she really didn't have to and um, it gave her much greater pleasure and felt like she was offering something to the world through being able to donate and to um, give her time and her creativity to, to those who are less fortunate. Another story is completely different. I worked with someone who had just retired after what, about 30 years of being a very successful cardiologist. And he had enjoyed art classes in his teenage years and really hadn't made art since then. And kind of with this sort of flippant attitude said, well, what else am I gonna do with my life? Might as well paint. So he took uh, one of my workshops um, at one of the many places that I teach around the country. And, um, you know, okay, so that was cool. Um, and he ended up working with me for three months. And um, very interesting person in that he was a very nonverbal person. Um, and, you know, very sort of gruff, but extremely expressive in his work. And, went very quickly from one style to another style to another style and would sort of, you know, very matter-of-factly say, well, I don't really know what I want to do. I'm just, I'm just painting. And um, a couple of years later, he kept taking the workshop and finally he said, well, my wife says I should, you know, stop talking to her about art. So I'm going to do one of your one-year programs and see where it takes me. I have nothing else to do. <laughs> so I thought, okay, well, this will be interesting. So um, about eight months into it, a very curious thing happened. He all of a sudden sort of clicked in. He was working much larger as I was encouraging him to work larger. And kind of out of the blue, got hooked on a particular way of painting that in a way he invented, but in a way was drawn from other sources of inspiration, mostly in the abstract expressionist world. And all of a sudden every painting was, was really strong. And I would say maybe two or three months before the end of our time together, he matter of factly said, well, I'm growing out of space in my garage. I might as well do something with these paintings. So, I'm gonna try and get a gallery because, you know, what else am I gonna do with the work? So he um, took a little, couple of little classes from those who are, um, who help artists figure out how to best market themselves. And within six weeks, he landed a gallery in an area not too far from where he lives, in a different state, however, and I think, actually, as I talk to you, the show is still up. He was immediately given a one-person show in March of 2022 and um, has sold a number of pieces. And, oh my gosh, well, I guess I'm a professional artist now. <laughs> and I, I think this story is interesting because this is truly somebody who started out with the attitude of, well, I've got nothing else to do and I used to like to paint, so why don't I paint? Without having um, a real determined strategy or path that I want to be a professional artist, as opposed to someone else that I've worked with who was a dermatologist for many years and retired and had very clear vision of being a professional artist and worked with me over a number of years and now she's showing and selling her work through galleries and 
very successful, but she had a very determined strategy for doing that and saw me as a person that could help her get there in terms of developing her voice. And in each case, the kind of work that they're making, in, in the cardiologist um, case, it was very clear that large work, large format, really suited his expression. And so that helps to determine, okay, well, what kind of market, who might want to buy these paintings? Um, in the dermatologist's case, she lives in an area where her particular color palette happens to be very, um, very well received in the area that she lives. So that has helped her be successful. Um, and remain true to her own voice in the kinds of colors that naturally come to her. What I want you to walk away with is an understanding that the way to be an artist really is tied to who you are as a person as opposed to doing it the way that you're supposed to do it. Um, if the way you're supposed to do it in a traditional sense of getting a gallery and um, applying for residencies and um, you know, being collected by important collectors is something that's truly important to you, then that's really important to know. If you're a person who knows that that's much less important to you, but you feel like you should do that because that's what you've been told is the path for an artist, then think again. Think at what's going to give you the most enjoyment in your practice as an artist, as a whole artist. So I hope you enjoyed the stories I shared about artists who have been working with me. And if you did, I would so love for you to like the video and subscribe to my channel. And I invite you to then go over to Whole Artist Mastery website and download the free booklet that I'm offering on the website and to check out all the different things that Whole Artist Mastery is about and, and join the community. It would be great to have you. And so thanks very much. I'll see you soon.